two different types of memories. We have declarative memories or explicit memories or non-declarative or implicit memories. Non-declarative memories, these are like procedural memories, like how did you ride your bicycle? These involve parts of your brain like your basal ganglia, motor cortex, cerebellum. And then declarative memories or explicit memories, these take place deep in the temporal lobe in what's called the hippocampus. And these are subdivided into semantic memories like remembering physiology facts and episodic memories like maybe you remember going and having lunch with a friend or something like that last week. So those are declarative memories, explicit memories that take place in the hippocampus. Let's see what long-term potentiation is going on there. So what is, how we take a short-term memory and consolidate it into a long-term memory. That's long-term potentiation. And it involves a glutaminergic neuron releasing glutamate. So we have a neuron in the hippocampus. This red part represents a dendrite of that neuron. And that's where you find the receptors for glutamate. There's two subtypes, AMPA and NMDA receptors. That stands for N-methyl-D-aspartate. So when glutamate is released from this presynaptic neuron, it'll bind to both of these. So it'll bind to the AMPA receptor and it'll bind to the NMDA receptor. This will allow a little bit of sodium to come into the cell, partially depolarizing the membrane. But we also, that's not going to get this whole situation going though, we need more. There's another step here that has to happen where this NMDA receptor also has to bind to one of two different amino acids, either glycine or D-serine. These come from astrocytes typically. They have to also bind here. But that still doesn't get this glutamate, this glutamate uh, ion channel open. What it takes is more and more stimulation here until enough positive charges build up inside this cell to repel this ion that's physically blocking the NMDA receptor, and it's a magnesium ion. So when positive charges repel that out, that magnesium ion is released, and two different ions are going to come in this channel. One is a little bit of sodium and a lot of calcium. So calcium is going to rush into the, th through this NMDA receptor. It's going to bind to a protein inside the cell called calmodulin. That's this protein here. They form a complex. And when that complex is formed, it's going to activate two different types of kinases. What's a kinase? It is an enzyme that phosphorylates something. One of the kinases is CAMK2. That stands for cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase. No, scratch that. It stands for calmodulin. C-A-M for calmodulin. Calmodulin protein kinase 2. That's what CAMK2 CAM stands for. Calmodulin protein kinase 2. So what this does is it's going to phosphorylate two things. The first thing it's going to phosphorylate is we have some vesicles inside our neuron here, and they have more AMPA receptors. When this phosphate binds to this vesicle, it's going to cause that vesicle to merge with the cell membrane and insert those AMPA receptors in the cell membrane that's going to strengthen this synapse because you're going to be able to get more sodium into the cell and it's going to cause a stronger depolarization to get more NMDA receptors going. So that's one. Another thing it does is it'll go up here and phosphorylate the AMPA receptors that are already in the cell membrane. When it phosphorylates that, it's going to increase the duration of how long they're open. That's going to make it more efficient on getting sodium in. So that's two different ways this kinase will st strengthen this synapse. However, calmodulin is going to activate protein kinase A. And protein kinase A is going to go into the uh, cell nucleus and it's going to bind to a transcription factor. That transcription factor is called cyclic AMP response element binding protein. A better name is CREB. So cyclic AMP response element binding protein. It's right there at the promoter, right before the gene. And when 
this kinase phosphorylates it, it's going to change gene expression, increase the amount of messenger RNA for two different proteins. One of these proteins is more AMPA receptors. So you're going to make more AMPA receptors, put them in these vesicles. You already have uh, this other kinase that's activating this and inserting it. So you're getting more and more AMPA receptors inserted into the cell membrane. Another one is on our dendrites, we have what's called dendritic spines. And this is where a lot of this takes place, where these, you know, um, ion channels are located, are on the dendritic spines. So if you're making the proteins to create more dendritic spines, make them larger, that's going to increase your surface area, increase the amount of AMPA receptors you can get in there, and NMDA receptors, increase the strength of this synapse, and you get more efficient firing that way. And all this is going to keep getting stronger and stronger and causing these interactions the more frequency we get from this glutamate presynaptic neuron or the more glutamate neurons that are activating this. So that's how we get those strong reverberating circuits going. One more thing. Um, this is a positive feedback loop. Whenever all this is going on, it stimulates two different neurotransmitters. One is nitric oxide. This is a gas. And what it does is it's made on demand with all of this. It, it's a get small gas. It can get through the cell membrane without a channel. It'll go and get into this axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron that releases glutamate. It's going to increase the amount of glutamate being released. You increase the amount of glutamate being released, the more depolarization you can get within the cell. It's going to strengthen the synapse. Another one, 2-AG. I made another video about this. This is an endocannabinoid. We have two different endogenous cannabinoids. We have 2-arachidonyl glycerol and we have anandamide. In this case, with learning, 2-AG is made on demand. It's our only lipid neurotransmitter along with anandamide in the body. So these endocannabinoids are short-chain fatty acids derived from the phospholipid membrane. That goes off and it'll react with a, it'll go over here to a GABAergic neuron. Remember GABA releases, uh, the, the um, GABAergic neurons release GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So when it binds to its channel, it allows calcium in. So if this endocannabinoid goes back as a retrograde neurotransmitter, both of these are retrograde neurotransmitters because they're going from the postsynaptic neuron back up to the presynaptic neurons. So when it goes back here, it's going to shut down the firing of this GABAergic neuron. And remember that's called depolarization induced suppression of inhibition. So when this cell depolarizes, it induces the suppression of this inhibition, the GABAergic uh, neuron. So you can see all the different reverberating positive feedback loops that are going on and when this gets really efficient we have a really good strong long-term memory thank you for more with the human body subscribe turn on those post notifications give this video a big thumbs up bye